So I'm just sitting here checking through all these posts on Kirk Franklin for on that comment he made yesterday about um, you know working with Kanye, and uh, I have one simple question, and it's, it's simply this: Does Jesus love Kanye West? The simple answer is yes, he does. Um, and my my point of view is this: For as long as Kanye West is alive, he has the opportunity to live for Jesus. For as long as he's still breathing, he has an opportunity to change his life. And so we've seen this in scripture many times. You see, we see Saul turning to Paul, somebody that killed Christians, somebody that hated Christians and made it his duty to kill Christians. We see God speak, uh, speak to somebody to go and tell, speak to the prophet to go and speak to to Saul and say, hey dude, listen, Saul is busy praying right now. I'm revealing to him. Go speak to him. And he needs to change his name from Saul to Paul. And Paul becomes one of the most influential characters in the Bible to date simply because God changed his heart and so what's really disappointing is just seeing all the comments that Christians are making it's so disappointing to see how negative Christians are to see how judgmental Christians are and then you wonder sometimes why you know why these religious churches are so empty why young people don't want to go to these religious churches because you're looking at people with such a judgmental point of view like you you automatically preempting condemning their souls to hell without even giving God a chance to deal with them uh, which is wrong. That's not our responsibility as Christians is not to condemn people to hell. It's not to, to point out their sins and to point out their mistakes. Yes, the Bible does give us an option where we can speak to our fellow Christians and, you know, call them out on, on their mistakes or things that they do wrong and kind of, you know, correct them and, and help each other grow. But as sinners, it's not our responsibility to judge and to invest them and to have, give them a hard time. It's our responsibility simply to love them, to show the love of Jesus. I mean, a guy like 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 uh, T.D. Jakes reaches out to Steve Harvey and, and allows him to perform at Megafest. After Steve Harvey performs at Megafest, um, Kirk Franklin reaches out to Steve Harvey. Uh, 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 Donny McClurkin reaches out to Steve Harvey. These guys start engaging him to a point where he decides that he wants to change his life. I mean, we can even look at Justin Bieber. Justin Bieber knew Jesus. He knew the truth. He knew what's right from wrong. And he lost his way. Now, Carl Lenz reaches out to Justin Bieber. Judas Smith reaches out to Justin Bieber. And Justin Bieber decides to follow Jesus. Now, so my point is simply this. Um, it's so sad to see how, how we as Christians, and I put myself in that position, that we can judge and come, so, come down so hard on these people um, who are reaching out to the lost. When you think about Jesus, when he came back uh, after after he died and he came back and he appeared to his disciples, he said, guys, listen, you need to go out there and make disciples of all men. Go out there and speak good news and tell them that Jesus is, is risen. And he says, yes, if they don't want to accept, dust your shoes and move on. But if they accept, you know, then at least they know that Jesus is, is love and Jesus loves them. And so my, my just my point is, guys, let's let's it's not our position or it's not our prerogative. It's not our duty. To point out the sinner's mistakes it's not our duty to give them our time it's our duty to reach out to them it's our duty to love them it's our duty to show them the love of jesus and that's simply what it is so so it's really just it's really just disheartening and sad to see um how christians are just really giving Kirk a difficult time about reaching out to kanye same thing happened to lecrae lecrae started working with secular artists christians got off you know jumped on this high horse of theirs that they're so perfect and they didn't care who they trampled on riding this horse but even you as a christian dude you're not perfect even me as a christian i'm not perfect without the blood of jesus without the redemption on the cross i'm not perfect another thing is satan can't afford your soul jesus bought our souls when he died he paid for it with his blood satan can't afford so the story of i sold my soul to the devil the devil can't afford your soul jesus bought your soul he paid for it with his blood with his life he bought it so it rightfully belongs to him. It's just up to you to make the decision to whether you want to follow Jesus or not. And so if Kirk is reaching out to Kanye and, and, and trying to reach out to him and speak to him, and the story about the light can't be in the darkness and all this crap, dude, a light can't shine when the lights are on. A light needs to shine. And guess what? Darkness can't overpower light. It can't. When the light comes, darkness has to flee. Light is the absence of darkness. Darkness is the absolute absence of light. So when you shine light in a dark place, guess what? The light comes on. So, so fam, really, I just want to appeal to all the other Christians, man. Let's reach out to the lost. Let's reach out to those who don't know Christ. Whether it's 
popular people or whether it's just a family member or whether it's an uncle on drugs or on alcohol or whatever let's reach out to those who don't know christ regardless of their popularity status whatever it might be